Hi, good afternoon, everybody. So uh, I, as you all are aware, we have the secretary appearing shortly, so I'll be quick um, and get to your questions. But I do have two things at the top. Today at 2 o'clock, Secretary Kerry will chair a ministerial debate of the United Nations Security Council on the situation in Iraq at the UN headquarters in New York. The United States holds the presidency of the Security Council for the month of September. Um, I spoke with the Secretary this morning, um, and he sees this uh, session of the Council as an opportunity to demonstrate unified international support for the new Iraqi government and emphasize the need for broad political inclusivity as the new government pursues its agenda on behalf of the Iraqi people. And this Council session will also provide a platform for the international community to underscore its support for the new government as it fights against ISIL and responds to the ongoing humanitarian crisis. This builds upon uh, conferences in Jeddah and in Paris that have happened recently um, and builds now to this broader uh, international stage. In addition, the Council session will highlight support for Iraq's political, economic, and diplomatic reintegration into the region and the international community. It's going to be live streamed on the UN website at 2 o'clock, um, and I'll finish up in time for people to watch that. Um, one word about the UN. Yes, so I hope. One word about the UN General Assembly, uh, which takes place uh, next week. The Secretary is in New York today. Um, and uh, the U.S. as President of the Security Council this month will also raise other important issues to the highest levels. Uh, yesterday, for example, the Council held an emergency meeting on Ebola, the first ever emergency meeting on a health crisis in the history of the United Nations. It resulted in the adoption of a U.S. drafted resolution that received the largest number of co-sponsors of any resolution in U.N. history, 134. There will be numerous activities in New York next week to extend the conversation on Ebola, including the Secretary General's high-level meeting on Thursday. And the President will be making his annual address to the General Assembly on Wednesday. Later that day, we'll chair a meeting of the Security Council to discuss the, the threats posed by foreign terrorist fighters. And this will be the second time the President has chaired a Council meeting. Um, other leading themes include ambitious action on climate, which will be discussed at the Secretary General's Climate Summit, and the Secretary will employ this week to uh, hold high-level follow-up meeting to the June Oceans Conference, which we uh, hosted here at the State Department. Now, this is just a quick snapshot, um, so there will be important high-level events also on gender, on education, human rights, peacekeeping development, and much more. We look forward to talking about those next week. And for organizational issues, uh, we will be in touch directly with the press corps as the schedule takes shape. So, Can yeah, I just Matt. ask, yeah, first, welcome to the podium. Thank you. For your first briefing, which right, since you only have about 15 minutes left before you have to go, <laughs> okay. and it'll run through a quick, old, sure. quick uh, logistical one. The first one, just on, on what you mentioned on the Ebola, um, on the Ebola resolution, I believe there are 190 something members of the UN. Are, does this mean that 60 countries or so are in favor of Ebola? Well, no, those were the co-sponsors. Well, uh, why wouldn't everyone co-sponsor? Are you disappointed that you couldn't get the entire world united behind or against? Ebola? Uh, no, I, I think, uh, look, we, we had a huge number of countries uh, more than ever before step up to co-sponsor. We're very happy All about right. that. Um, uh, very briefly, do you have anything to add to the President's statement on the Scottish referendum? Uh, well, I think the President's uh, statement really uh, speaks for itself, and uh, All right. uh, I don't have anything to add. Okay. So uh, I just want to go to Iraq and the, um, the, the coalition. The other day when the Secretary was on the Hill in his first the, before the Senate, not the House, uh, in answer to um, one Senator's questions, he referred to the apparent doctrine of hot pursuit. Can you explain what he was talking about? Was he talking about hot pursuit by Iraqi troops, by other troops? And it, does he mean that it's somehow legal for that for the, whoever those troops are to cross a, a, a the border into another country if they're chasing bad guys. Right. Um, well, the, the the question and the secretary was referring to self defense, um, which which includes the right <clears throat> to use necessary and proportionate force to address armed attacks that emanate from another nation, if that nation is unwilling or unable. To address the threat, um, so I, I'm not going to get ahead, ahead of where we are uh, right now uh, and lock into a specific legal justification. I think the secretary was talking about, um, you know, that was only one of uh, of a few things the secretary referred to in response to the question. But that's 
that's the context in which uh, he referred to it, and that's the, 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 the concept. Rob, um, I understand that. So the administration believes that hot pursuit is a is a is a is a, uh, a legal interna interna under international law. Hot pursuit is a legal justification for pursuing uh, terrorists. Well, again, I'm, I'm not, not going to get ahead orders. of the the legal um, discussions that are happening uh, inside. Uh, the administration. Uh, I, I'm not asking you to get ahead of them. I just want to know if that's what his comment meant, or if he was just speaking off the cuff and 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 saying and saying something that uh, that perhaps is not being used as a legal ju legal uh, justification or a legal argument. Well, to, I think uh, I think if you if you recall, the 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 secretary and the administration has been clear that uh, with respect to. Uh, actions inside Iraq, the, uh, the Iraqi government uh, has asked the United States and uh, other members of the international community for support. And then there's also the question um, with reference uh, to Syria. Uh, and I think, as we've said, you know, the, uh, that, that when uh, and if such action takes place, uh, you know, it will be uh, on the basis of, uh, of justification. Secretary was asked uh, about possible ways uh, in which one could look at it. He was talking about a possible way. I don't want to suggest uh, more than. Uh, well, does more that mean that the administration believes that it's okay and legally legal under international law for Iraqi troops or any troops to come, uh, troops that have been invited by the Iraqi government, whether they're Iraqi or not, to cross the border into Syria in hot pursuit of? Well, I'm not going to speak to a specific uh, circumstance or a specific scenario. Um, That's which, not specific at all, though. It's just a, well, no, but but I, but I'll go back to what I said, which is, you know, the secretary is referring to the right of self-defense, and and you that believe includes, that that includes hot that pursuit? includes the right to use necessary and proportionate force <coughs> to address armed attacks emanating from another nation, if that nation is unwilling or unable to address the threat. That's that's the secret. That's the. Uh, and that, you believe, encompasses the idea, concept of hot pursuit. The administration well, believes that. That's, that yes. that's, that's what the secretary was referring to um, okay. in his in So, his in answer. other words, the short answer is yes. All right? You believe that that, 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 that self-defense includes hot pursuit. Well, I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not uh, going to suggest I, I don't know if that's the right uh, you know, tag to put on it, um, but I've explained uh, our, right. our view of the, of the substantive matter, okay. uh, which is uh, what I see. Yes, Joe. It's the action on the ground today. Um, the French, <clears throat> after President Hollande said that they were going to order in airstrikes, actually ordered in airstrikes today um, in Iraq against uh, ISIL targets in the northeast. Do you have any details on that that you can share with us? And um, more broadly, how is this... Um, going to be coordinated? Who's in charge on the ground? Who's actually telling the French or you could go in? Is it the Amer Americans or is it the Iraqis? Could you give us a sense of how this is going to work? And that goes to the broader question of the mm -hmm. coalition. Once more people start, the British have already flown some uh, um, sorties. So how, how is this all being done? Mm -hmm. Well, we welcome the announcement uh, by, by France uh, and their airstrikes today against ISIL targets uh, in Iraq. We consider this a significant contribution to the efforts of the growing international coalition uh, to combat ISIL. Now, uh, I, I'm not going to get into operational details, um, but we are coordinating closely with the Iraqi authorities and with our French partners uh, and with, uh, with other uh, international partners uh, on this effort, and we'll continue to do so going forward. But for the specifics of that particular action, I uh, refer you to, uh, to the, the French government and to the Iraqi authorities. But who's in charge? Somebody has to be in charge. Obviously, you don't want everybody flying off and doing things uh, ad hoc at random because you could end up with a bit of a, in a bit of a, a mess. Well, uh, our, our, our point of view on this is that all nations assisting Iraq in, in its efforts against ISIL um, have to fully respect um, ISIL, uh, have to re fully respect Iraq's sovereignty uh, and independence. So everything we do I in Iraq is in support of the Iraqis um, and with the full consent of the Iraqi government. Now again, in the, uh, I'll let uh, my colleagues at the Defense Department talk about the particulars of, of coordination with the Iraqis, but I think it's important to, uh, to remind that, uh, as it was stated uh, today, I think by uh, Ayatollah, uh, Ayatollah Sistani, that uh, you know, we are supporting Iraq 
and we respect Iraq's sovereignty and independence. Jeffrey, um, uh, we'll, just, we'll just come, yeah, uh, I just had a connection yeah. with that we saw yesterday, and there hasn't been any much reaction from the United States about this because there weren't any briefings as such of, of the Australian uh, what happened in Australia. And, and that the fact that they uh, detained these people who they said they were ISIL members as well. Was there any, um, first off, what is your reaction to that news? And secondly, was there any um, U.S. involvement in terms of intelligence sharing? Was it something that you tipped them off to? How, how did that happen? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, our intelligence professional, professionals uh, for a long time have talked about uh, the host of terrorist threats that uh, emanates uh, from Syria. And we've discussed quite a bit the challenges posed by foreign terrorist fighters. The President will talk about this next week when he chairs the UN Security Council a meeting on this topic. Um, now, I'm not going to get into details here about specific um, threats or um, other details. I would refer you to the Australian uh, government uh, for that. Um, we've, of course, uh, seen the Australian Prime Minister describe the disruption of what uh, seems to, uh, to have been an ISIL plot uh, to mount a, a demonstration uh, killing. Um, this was a very large law enforcement operation, uh, one of the largest in Australian history, and uh, resulted in 15 people being detained. But this is an ongoing Australian investigation, so I'd refer you to them for, for Does details. it surprise you, though, that a group that's um, primarily based in Iraq and Syria was able to um, apparently have such reach um, down to Australia? Well, again, this is an ongoing Australian investigation, so I'd refer you to, to them. Um, but as the United States uh, has said, and as the President uh, himself has highlighted in his address uh, last week, you know, we believe that thousands of, of foreign terrorist fighters, including Europeans and some Americans, uh, have joined the fight in Iraq uh, and Syria. Um, so we certainly recognize that these people could try to return to their home countries and, and carry out attacks, and that's something we're, we're quite cognizant of and we see as something requiring uh, extreme vigilance. Jeffrey, so, just a quick uh, follow-up. Uh, just, 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 just a moment. Uh, just a quick yeah, follow-up. Yeah, uh, welcome uh, to the podium. Mm -hmm. Now, on the issue of hot pursuit, uh, you're saying that any nation that is unwilling or unable, uh, does that mean, and we're talking about Syria, I mean, we're not talking about a country uh, that is far away. So uh, does that mean that you will discuss with the Syrians to see whether they are able or unable, or uh, willing or unwilling uh, to sort of control their borders? Does that mean any kind of communication? Uh, no, no, it doesn't, uh, doesn't mean that at all. I think we've spoken uh, quite, quite a bit in, in this briefing room in the last uh, few days uh, about, uh, about that. Uh, we're not coordinating with the Assad regime. But, but, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but so, uh, the, 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 Roz, Roz and then Ilhan. Okay, very, very uh, good. Uh, okay. Well, sorry. Um, sorry, we just got to yeah, go yeah, quickly. Question yeah. about the coalition overall. We've yeah. gone through the list of statements and commitments, and it seems there are 11 countries, or rather 10 countries in one regional group, that have made statements condemning ISIL, have, have vowed support, but haven't actually done anything concrete, airstrikes, humanitarian airdrops, and so on. Do you consider these countries, which are pretty significant countries when you take a look at the list, mm -hmm. of being active central parts of this organization? And well, they include, I'm sorry, I don't know which. Well, yeah, well they include uh, Egypt, Georgia, Greece, Israel, Jordan, Oman, Romania, Singapore, Taiwan, the UAE, and the Arab League. None of them have actually put any troops, equipment, supplies, money on the table. Are they part of the coalition? Uh, well, look, uh, every country is going to make their own decisions and make their own announcements, so I'm not going to speak uh, on behalf of them. Um, I, as the President outlined uh, our strategy and as the Secretary will be uh, speaking to very shortly, you know, our strategy is centered on uh, building a global coalition that will collaborate across a number of areas. Uh, military support is one component of this. Um, that includes training and equipping, it includes logistics, it includes airlift, um, as well as um, other uh, more direct actions. Um, and there are countries, you know, uh, in Europe, there are, there are other countries that are committed to being part of the, of the kinetic effort. And, uh, but there's also uh, a lot of uh, contributions that other, uh, in other areas that can be made. Um, there's illicit funding, uh, which has to be dried up. Not every country is going to play a military role, and we're not asking every country to play a military role, frankly. Um, so we see this also as uh, a, a way of, of trying to interdict the flow of foreign terrorist fighters, uh, to dry up illicit funding sources, 
uh, as well as uh, dealing with the humanitarian consequences of, of ISIL's uh, actions in Iraq and Syria, um, as well as the, uh, the distortions uh, of Islam that ISIL is responsible for propagating. So there are a variety of ways in which countries can contribute, and we'll let them uh, make their own uh, announcements. Quick follow-up. Given that while it does take a lot of time to ramp up military assistance, it doesn't take a lot of effort by contrast to dry up funding. Uh, there are already lots of mechanisms in place. Would you expect these countries, as an example, to basically crack down on the funding sources, <laughs> to crack down uh, at uh, border controls to make sure that people aren't crossing borders, particularly the, among these countries in the region, to actually put into place their stated commitments? Or to well, make certainly, real we're working. We're working with uh, with all countries uh, in the region and across uh, across the world to find ways to uh, to disrupt and block uh, terrorist uh, financing as well as the flow of foreign terrorist fighters. The secretary will be uh, uh, talking about that as well next week when he's at the UN uh, hosting or co-chairing a meeting of the Global Counterterrorism Forum. So this is uh, certainly an issue on which we're actively uh, One engaged. One final point: the yeah. airstrikes have been going on for more than six weeks since August eighth. Where is the urgency on the part of these countries and others that have yet to actually uh, put you know, their promises into I, I wouldn't into suggest play. a lack of urgency on anyone's uh, part. I, Ilhan. Uh, near Turkish border, uh, uh, Kurdish city Kobani uh, been under attack by ISIL forces for the last few days. Uh, according to reports, about 60 Kurdish villages now taken over by the ISIL. Mm -hmm. uh, tens of thousands of Kurd Kurds uh, fled to Turkey. Uh, are you considering any uh, any kind of uh, uh, action uh, uh, against this force anytime soon? Well, uh, we're deeply concerned about uh, ISIL's reported seizure, seizure this week of, uh, by what we understand, 20 to 30 uh, Kurdish villages, um, and we're closely following uh, the situation. Um, we are aware of reports of anywhere between three and 7,000 uh, displaced Syrian Kurds gathering uh, at the border uh, with Turkey. And uh, we understand from UN estimates that, uh, that maybe up to 5,000 of them, mostly Kurds, are seeking to flee to Turkey. Now, Turkey has continued to show uh, great generosity, uh, hosting nearly 850,000 refugees um, uh, from Syria, as well as 200,000 from Iraq. But uh, I'm not going get, to uh, get beyond um, you know, uh, the, uh, that information right now um, and speculate about any Are you action. coordinating with Turkish government? Uh, oh, we remain in, in close contact with On the specific issue. Um, I would have to check if there has been some specific conversation, but we're in regular uh, contact. Um, uh, yes? Yeah, um, I'd like to come back to Africa. Uh, 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 hang on just a second. Anything else on Iraq? Yeah. Uh, okay, uh, Nicola, then uh, Elliot, then uh, Yep, Nicola. <laughs> uh, yeah, back to the coalition uh, building process. Uh, the Secretary told us in Paris that uh, the U.S. was opposed uh, to any military coordination with Iran on the fight against uh, ISIS, uh, but that uh, the U.S. was open to a diplomatic conversation with, with Tehran. So could you tell us if yesterday, on the margin of the nuclear talks, the two countries talk about uh, Iraq and, and the fight against ISIS. Sure. Uh, as, as you know, we uh, have a team in New York right now for the P5 plus 1 uh, talks. The United States and Iran held bilateral consultations Wednesday and Thursday in New York. Um, those meetings were constructive, uh, focused uh, primarily on the nuclear issues. Um, so with respect um, to your specific question, We've always said that the nuclear issues are separate from uh, actions regarding ISIL, um, but discussion of this, of this uh, threat uh, it did arise on the margins uh, of the meeting, uh, as they have from time to time. Uh, it also happened during, this, uh, during the bilateral and this latest uh, round. Um, I don't have any details on the specifics to share, but uh, yes, it did come up. Um, so, Elliot. Yeah, thanks. Um, and congratulations again on your first briefing. Thank you. Um, Yesterday and the day before, Secretary Kerry faced a lot of um, skeptical questioning from, uh, from members of Congress on whether the administration has the authority under the AUMF um, of over a decade ago to conduct this operation. Is the, is the administration's reasoning for that, is it that ISIS used to be 
a part of Al Qaeda? Is that the central um, tenet upon this, which this reasoning rests, or is that understanding correct? Right. Well, uh, the the secretary, uh, as you say, he did speak to this uh, it, at some at some length. Uh, I you know I don't have uh, anything to add to his uh, his comments. Mm -hmm. uh, it, I thought he was uh, exhaustive, uh, however, in addressing the issue. He did say that the well, he said that the administration would welcome a new AUMF and that it would work with Congress on such an authorization, but that the administration has the authority believes it has the authority under previous AUMFs. Will the administration be? lobbying Congress to get a new authorization in the way that it aggressively lobbied for the type passage of the um, authorization to train and equip Syrian forces, or is that kind well, of thing where if, – if I understand correctly, uh, they recessed yesterday, so uh, you know, as, a, as a practical question, uh, I'm not sure um, that's uh, something that uh, can be done. But going – I mean, term, this is a multi-year uh, operation, I, so going forward – Well, uh, I'm not going to, uh, you know, get ahead of uh, what may uh, happen with uh, with Congress uh, mm -hmm. uh, to come. Yes? Just on the meeting at 2 p.m., do we know how many countries and which countries will be participating today? So um, the, uh, this is a, a meeting of the, of the Security Council. So of course the 15, uh, 15 members uh, of the Security Council uh, will, uh, will be in attendance. Um, and this is also, uh, just a moment. All right. Um, so the, uh, this is also a, uh, a session uh, in which, in which uh, Interested uh, countries and those affected by the situation um, uh, can uh, can ask for the opportunity to speak. Um, in this case, uh, you know, I don't have an estimate of how many countries will participate, um, but I can uh, say that the Iranian de delegation made a request to participate and to speak at the meeting. Again, this is uh, this is something that uh, UN uh, members have uh, have the right to request uh, the ability to speak. So, uh, we. We did not. Uh, we we invited uh, at the start those member states that had expressed an interest uh, in making contributions to the international coalition fighting ISIL. Um, but of course, other states can uh, can come okay. uh, as well. Can, yes. Is Israel attending this meeting? I don't know. I don't okay. have, I have uh, that. Another question. Do you have an update about the U.S. Egyptian uh, uh, Mohammed Sultan who is imprisoned in Egypt? Yes, I believe I do. Um, so the welfare of U.S. citizens uh, incarcerated abroad is a top priority for the State Department. Uh, we continue to provide appropriate consular services to Mr. Sultan, including monitoring his health, pressing Egyptian authorities to ensure he has access to appropriate care, and maintaining regular access. We routinely seek consular visits uh, with him, and we arranged for him to be seen by an outside physician to assess his condition, and we continue to closely monitor uh, this case and uh, to raise it with Egyptian officials. Uh, urging the Egyptian government to speedily present uh, w its evidence uh, against him or to release him. Um, so, Matt, come back to you. We have other topics. I, I have a, yeah, one very brief one, and it's just on Mexico. Yes. Um, there's a report that um, Mexican security forces um, basically murdered 21 people who had surrendered to them, and I'm just wondering if you have any concerns or comment about that given the fact that you have been very active at both in training and cash and supplies the, the, uh, the Mexican war on the drug cartels? Mm -hmm. um, so we are committed partners of Mexico in the fight against uh, uh, transnational organized uh, crime. Of course, the framework for us uh, is the Merida uh, Initiative, uh, which has bipartisan support in Congress. And we maintain a high-level dialogue with Mexico um, in the context of uh, the Merida uh, initiative. We have seen these uh, most recent reports, and we're following uh, this case. We've been following this case uh, since, since June. Um, we have encouraged the government of Mexico um, at, to investigate, and we understand that several Mexican en entities are investigating uh, this incident. So we would, uh, we would refer to them for the status uh, of those investigations. Uh, but as in all cases where security forces use lethal force, uh, we think it's uh, imperative that uh, that there is a credible review of the circumstances undertaken in response to them, um, and the appropriate civilian authorities uh, should conduct uh, those investigations. Uh, so I'd refer you back All to right. Mexicans. Over and then just one, on the on the Iraq discussion in New York, was that both days that it was raised, or just one of the 
you want to do uh, that damage. level of detail I don't believe I have uh, we certainly raised it I, I can see if there's more uh, on whether it came up uh, both days yes Joe I have something related on Iran please I don't know if you've seen that a group of young people who did a video of themselves dancing to the happy song from uh, Farrell have been uh, sentenced to up to one year suspended sentence in jail and 91 lashes I wondered if um, the United States had a reaction to what would seem to be a pretty severe sentence. We are aware of the, of the reports that sentences were handed down uh, in, in, this, uh, in this case, uh, Iranian youth who were arrested uh, for making a video of themselves. Um, uh, we've followed this closely and with great concern. Um, the reported punishments are, uh, in our view, an unacceptable response to the exercise of freedom of expression by the participants in the video. We would urge the Iranian government to respect uh, human rights uh, that are protected by its own constitution as well as its international obligations uh, and, uh, and commitments. And I have one more, sorry, just to jump yeah. to Ebola. And okay. Sierra. Um, is, uh, sorry, was your question on Iran or no. Iraq? Okay, we'll come then right sorry after to, Ebola. Sorry, go ahead. Just very quickly, um, Sierra Leone today started imposing a three day curfew for all its citizens um, in, it, in its bid to try and uh, stem the spread of Ebola. Um, in the United States' opinion, is this a wise move? I've seen that some agencies have been concerned that it could stop people from getting care. Other agencies believe it could actually be effective. Um, is there a United States view on this? Mm -hmm. um, I'll have to come back to you after the briefing. I, d I don't okay. uh, have it, uh, have it okay. in hand, um, but we'll come back to you. Okay. Yes? Uh, following Hurricane Ordeal, yes. can you say how many Americans are still stranded out in Cabo? Um, and has the U.S government been coordinating with the Mexican government to try to help them with right. that? Thanks. Um, so there is active engagement uh, across the U.S. government uh, working uh, with Mexican authorities to assist the safe return of U.S. citizens after Hurricane Odile. We have consular personnel uh, in the affected area providing assistance to stranded U.S. citizens. Uh, they are also at airports throughout Mexico to provide assistance to U.S. citizens who are uh, on their way out. The State Department arranged four charter flights uh, that evacuated more than 500 U.S. citizens over the past 24 hours. And so far, thousands of American citizens have departed the area on evacuation flights. Um, I would also, uh, we have, uh, the State Department also requested um, the assistance of the U.S. Coast Guard and the Department of Defense, uh, and both agencies responded uh, positively. I think DOD may have put out uh, some information uh, about their, uh, their role. Uh, so we remain uh, in close contact with Mexican authorities, but also across uh, the U.S. government. Do yes. Have, can mm -hmm. you say how many are still there? Or what uh, the difficult to estimate. Um, uh, so we know that thousands have departed, uh, but I, I don't have a specific figure about how, how many um, were there uh, to begin with. Yes. I ask you one question about Argentina. There is a political thunderstorm in this moment with yes. reactions from the president, tweeters against the U.S., someone to the ambassador. Any, any comment on that? Well, our charge d'affaires, Kevin Sullivan, met with uh, Argentinian Foreign Minister Hector Timmerman uh, on Tuesday morning. Uh, we don't have any comment about uh, that private conversation. Uh, we seek a constructive relationship with Argentina across uh, a range of issues, but uh, I don't really have more uh, to say uh, than that. Uh, Ilhan. Turkey. Yes. Uh, for five days now, uh, New York Times reporter uh, wrote a story that uh, ISIL recruitment is going on in Turkey and since then there's been under attack and today uh, Assistant Secretary Doug France uh, tweeted about it. Uh, I just want to see if you have any further comment on the situation. Uh, no, I don't think I have anything further uh, beyond uh, beyond his uh, okay. his comment. Uh, yes, Saeed. Yeah. Very quick question on the Palestinian Israeli. Uh, today, yep. President Hollande uh, said that he has uh, some sort of a plan or a proposal for uh, getting the negotiations going and perhaps getting to a two-state solution. Is that something that he's coordinated with you, or is that something that you would oppose, or you would allow the French to take a lead in this case? Uh, I'll have to check. I wasn't aware of that uh, okay. of that report. Thank you. Um, Matt, anything more from you? That's it. Okay. All right. Thank Thanks, you. everyone. Thank you.